Welcome back for part 2 of what if Ahsoka went back in time to save Anakin. Thank you for your support on part 1 of this what if. If you haven't seen the first part, the link will be in the description below. Ahsoka growled at the sight of Palpatine and Anakin's visible delight and she requested to join him to meet the Supreme Chancellor. Anakin accepts Ahsoka's company, not knowing her true intentions, and entered his office. The Padawan noticed various Sith artifacts in the Chancellor's office, and she was not surprised that the Jedi had failed to notice what was hidden in plain sight. Eventually, they leave the meeting, and Ahsoka asks her master if he had noticed the Dwarty statues before, and he had not, wondering what they were doing in his office. Leaving Anakin to his thoughts, the two Jedi entered the council chamber to receive their next mission, which Ahsoka saw as a chance to deal with General Grievous. With permission from Yoda, Ahsoka is allowed access to her own Y-Wing bomber and her own squadron drawing the fire of the turbo lasers, while Stanakin's squadron flanked the Venator-class Star Destroyers of Obi-Wan and Admiral Yularen. Unfortunately for Anakin, he has to improvise as usual, as the Ion Cannon is in its initiation sequence and Ahsoka has to enter the Malevolence to avoid its exterior fire. Landing in a hangar below, Ahsoka is joined by several members of the 501st Legion, but they are opposed by a battalion of droids. Ahsoka was still adjusting to only having one blade, and vowed to go to Willem after this adventure to obtain new kyber crystals. Nonetheless, she is able to scythe through the droids with the clones, until she is met by the clattering form of General Grievous. The droid general saw Ahsoka's lightsaber, and was eager to add it to his vast collection, but he did not know that Ahsoka was not as she seemed. Using her future lightsaber abilities, she asked the clones to go to disable the Iron Cannon, while she defended from Grievous. The cyborg soon increased the speed of his attacks, and igniting his other two lightsabers, Ahsoka was soon forced to retreat. The Y-Wing bomber of Anakin, and the Jedi Starfighter of Obi-Wan entered the battle, having flown out the range of the Ion Cannon attack. Anakin is annoyed at Ahsoka for taking such a risk, as he aided Obi-Wan in his attempts to defeat Grievous, and Ahsoka was left to try and destroy the ship. With the use of a crate of detonators, Ahsoka and the clones begin to destroy the Dreadnought, and she ends up in the hangar with Grievous, only having two of his lightsabers, but Anakin was on the floor. Ahsoka orders the clone medics to heal her master, while she helped Obi-Wan. Summoning the blade of Anakin to her hand, Ahsoka felt a lot more comfortable with two blades, and Obi-Wan watched in shock as Ahsoka attacked Grievous like a Jedi Master. With the distraction of Ahsoka, Grievous lost one of his blades to Obi-Wan, then his final one to Ahsoka, as his cybernetics lost all of their rhythm. Together, Obi-Wan and Ahsoka plunged their lightsabers into the chest of Grievous, and took the corpse into one of the remaining ships flying back to Obi-Wan's flagship. Obi-Wan had a lot of suspicions about Ahsoka's immense abilities, both in the Force and lightsaber combat, but those would have to wait, as they received a transmission from the Jedi Council to return to Coruscant, as one of the traps Yoda had set up in the Jedi Temple had been activated. The bandaged Anakin is quick to his feet, but he is in no state for combat, returning to the Halls of Healing to his annoyance, whereas Obi-Wan and Ahsoka discuss the infiltration of the Temple, with the rest of the Council. The Council deploy the two Jedi, who had just returned, to search for the assailant, leaving the rest of them observing the corpse of Grievous. From the brief report that Obi-Wan had given, it seemed that Ahsoka had dealt most of the damage to the infamous Jedi killer, and the Council looked to Yoda for guidance. The Grand Master says nothing for now, as he realised that the more people knew about Ahsoka's past self, the more likely would she fall into the hands of the Sith. Instead, he spotted something odd on the corpse of Grievous. A small tracking beacon was placed on the skeleton of the cyborg, and Yoda wondered if this was the real General Grievous, or merely a decoy to test Ahsoka's abilities. Yoda soon realised that Obi-Wan and Ahsoka could be walking into the Sith, and bolted out of the room, bundling down the floors of the temple. Approaching the entrance to the holocron vault, Yoda saw the hooded figure of Count Dooku. As Yoda had expected, Dooku was dueling with Ahsoka and Obi-Wan, and trying to isolate Ahsoka, testing her abilities. As the Sith Apprentice saw his former master, Dooku vanished into the broken wall and into the night sky. Ahsoka was now in danger from the Sith. That is it for part 2 of What If Ahsoka Went Back in Time to Save Anakin. If you'd like to see a part 3 soon, please like this video, subscribe to this channel, 
and my other channel What If Films for more What Ifs. And as always, leave a comment on what What If you'd like to see next, and how I can improve my videos. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.